so it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. I want to thank you guys for coming, coming out. I know that the weather is just fantastic. The, the, my first tour um, opened just as the first Gulf War was opening. And, of course, I, I had some pretty stiff competition from CNN at the time. I was, that was one of the, the times when um, Anthony was talking about having two or three people at the tour. Um, and now it appears that we have the weather against us. Global warming doing a good job. So thanks for coming out and you know sacrificing some sun tanning to, to get to hear my talk. I also want to thank the 501st for coming out. I can't tell you what they add to the to these events. Um, they pretty much show up everywhere I go now, um, and it's it's a real pleasure to have them there. Um, you've seen, I mean, the, the costumes that they come up with. I've had a real Wookie. I swear he was real. Because <laughs> uh, if you've ever seen a Wookiee Wookie, um, costume, they can't wash them. And, and you know, he wears it pretty often. And, and, you know, he was like seven foot tall and it smelled like a wet dog. <laughs> and uh, so it's always great. You, you know, if you get a chance, look around, t talk to the people about their costumes because there's a little bit of history with every single one of them. And I believe... Every costume is just about handmade. I don't. None of these you can, can you buy them off of the shelf or anything. So if you're, people who are wearing them, pretty much either have to organize getting them made or make them themselves. I want to thank Anthony and Tom for having me and Barnes and Nobles because this is a little bit of a headache for them. You know, we have to reshape the store and get everything set up. So I appreciate that. So without further ado. You know, I haven't seen a copy of Apocalypse, except last night, and we won. I don't have my author's copies yet. Oh. All right, we got that. All right. So, wow. Here it is. The Apocalypse is finally here on us. It's been a, been a long, long time coming. For, for those of you who might not know, um, Apocalypse is the ninth book in a nine-book trilogy, or nine-book series, um, that was done by three different authors in rotation. Aaron Alston wrote the first book, Christy Golden wrote the second book, and I wrote the third book, and then we would start the rotation over. So we each wrote three books in, in one of in, um, the, in the series, which is the only way that you can put out a nine-book series in, well, I guess this one was a little more than three years, um, because right after the first book was out, the first writer had a heart attack. <laughs> and it's, it kind of slowed us down a bit. Um, he survived, and he's uh, Aaron's, Aaron's still writing and, and doing great stuff. But uh, it's been a been, been a long experience. But it's it's more than just the the nine book nine book series. It's really what I kind of think of as as the end of the Jason solo era. Now, how many people here are? EU fans and know what I talk about when I talk about Jason Solo. Okay, so so most of us. Right? Jason Solo was Han and Leia Solo's oldest son. Um, and their only surviving son after I killed their youngest son in my first book. <laughs> um, but we won't go there right now. Um, and after uh, he went through um, some traumatic experiences in the the. New Jedi Order, which is where I killed his younger brother, um, and after that he he started uh, he came home, kind of freaked out, decided he was going to go off on commune with the Force for five years, and then he came back and we started um, with the Dark Nest trilogy, and that was really what I think of as the beginning of the Jason Solo era. It was kind of Jason losing his way, trying to you know deal with everything that had happened to him during the war and. and everything that he had done. And about the time I was finishing up that series, the editors from Del Rey and Lucasfilm called and said, hey, we want to do a nine book series. Um, what do you think we ought to do? And I said, well, all right, I just had Jason lose his way. Why don't we have Jason fall to the dark side? And that became the, the Force series, which became a, another nine, it was the first nine book series that we had done. And that was all about Jason's fall from um, kind of a lost warrior into the into a full-fledged dark dark lord of the Sith. And about the time we were finishing that up, we uh, 
they said we want to do a nine, another nine book series. And this time, we know what we want to do. We want to talk about uh, the reasons Jason fell to the dark side. And as it developed, it kind of became um, an exploration of the ramifications of what his fall meant. Uh, so if you look at the Dark Nest trilogy, it was all about Jason, and it was kind of a personal, personal story about, to the extent that it was about Jason, it was about a lot of other stuff, but Jason's part in it was really about his, his losing his way. And then the second series, The Legacy of the Force, was a social story about Jason's fall to the dark side causing an intergalactic war. And then in the ninth, in the last part of the series, it's all about Jason, it's a spiritual journey, and it's all about what Jason's fall meant for not only him, but for the rest of the Jedi. And that kind of um, follows the way I like to structure my books. I always like to have, in the first third of the book, the stakes be personal. You know, somebody's trying to solve their own problem, and then things go wrong, and that problem becomes everybody's problem. And then by the time he solves it, he has to reach deep inside and, and deal with the fundamental changes in him or the, the fundamental problems that he's had that cause the problem, you know, cause him to have a problem in the first place. So you have that, that nice progression from personal to social to spiritual. And that's how this, the whole Jason series worked out, you know, 21 books um, going from the personal to the, uh, through the social to the spiritual. And I really wish that I could tell you, look you straight in the eye and tell you we planned it that way. <laughs> But it, it just kind of arose out of opportunities, um, seeing where the story was going, seeing what people were interested in, and what we felt needed to be told as the next stage of the story. So I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to, to talk about to begin with. And I want to just kind of throw it open for questions, and we'll just 